But as we do on a Friday night at this time is uh, we try to have a conversation about uh, an issue and a country in particular and it's uh, an extended conversation. A lot has been happening in Ethiopia recently. Of course, you would have seen uh, the dam controversy and uh, the countries built starting to fill the dam even though Egypt and Sudan perhaps not uh, quite happy with the negotiations process so far and also we saw some unrest in the country a little bit earlier on but it has had its uh, pluses the Prime Minister has uh, won a Nobel Peace Prize and has been working hard to change and create a new Egypt. I, I mean a new Ethiopia. I caught up with the Ethiopian ambassador in South Africa, uh, Shifero Menbacho, and uh, we talked about a lot of these issues and we began talking about uh, the dam controversy and I asked him right on the outset what he thought was the sticking point in coming to an agreement. Uh, but as you very much uh, and as everyone will be very much aware, this is a, a hydropower project that generates uh, power and then uh, the river flows its uh, natural course. And uh, this is also a, a dam, the Ethiopian, uh, the Great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, that is basically aimed to relieve the abject poverty uh, in the nation, and also for uh, 60 million Ethiopians who are deprived of any kind of electricity. So it's. Uh, a hydropower project, it's, it's Ethiopian hydropower project, but it's also it's African hydropower project as well. I think the, the real challenge is that uh, there are uh, what we call colonial treaties of the 1929 and particularly the 1959 that denies that this river belongs for more than Egypt and uh, more than Sudan as well. And the colonial treaty says this river is given in absolute hegemony and with uh, veto power uh, to these uh, two nations. And uh, I think the sticky point starts by uh, this belief of the colonial treaties that no one uh, should be sharing or caring from this river except uh, what those colonial treaties which uh, Ethiopia is not party to and uh, which uh, Ethiopia doesn't recognize as well uh, is uh, maintained to be the status quo otherwise there is no any reason and as we know uh, this is a project for uh, development as a hydropower project and it's also a project that contributes to the continent in terms of economic integration, regional economic integration. This is also a, a project that contributes even uh, equally to the lower downstream countries in terms of uh, the what you call the regular flow, smooth flow, uh, avoiding siltation, avoiding flooding, and also even uh, increasing the performance of the hydropower project, which they do have, but when they built, they were not uh, consulted on Ethiopian side, but the Ethiopian side, on the other hand, doing a several consultation to make sure trust and confidence are maintained and in place. All right, perhaps finally, are you confident that um, Addis, Khatoum and Cairo will find each other in uh, settling this matter once and for all? Uh, Peter, I'm uh, very much confident what re it requires is uh, the trust and confidence among the, the parties themselves. And we are also very much confident this is uh, a hydropower project, an Ethiopian project, but also it's an African project. But uh, very recently, as you know very well, that this matter now is brought to the African soil above all. And I would like to mention at this uh, joint that the AU mechanism 
chaired by the, the President of the Republic of South Africa as AU chair, and with the principles of what he call African solution to African problems, is actually taking a lead, and we have uh, all the trust and confidence that the AU process will finally bring the ultimate solution. But at the same time, I would like to also underline it's the, it's the readiness and the trust of the African member states, in this case, the three countries who are at the same time responsible for continental causes, need to come to a closer and address their issues in such a way that they have all the responsibility for the citizens and people of the three countries. Ethiopia has a responsibility for Egypt, Ethiopia has a responsibility for Sudan's population, and the same is true. Egypt has also a responsibility to taking care of or looking after the Ethiopian population in the Sudan as well. So, in the spirit of uh, Pan-Africanism and also African Renaissance and also the Agenda 2063, which is Africa we want, such projects needn't be or shouldn't be the cause of uh, peace and security challenge, but the cause of cooperation and also collaboration. So I trust the three countries with the facilitation of AU and with the chairmanship of Honorable President Sira Ramaphosa, which is uh, doing really a wonderful job, will be uh, will bring a fruition at the end. All right. So back home, we've seen some unrest uh, in recent weeks, and that followed the uh, killing of uh, celebrated singer Hashalu Hundesa. And I wonder if you could just take us through why his killing. Uh, sparked so much unrest and if it doesn't point to underlying issues such as ethnic tensions? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we as a government and, and as a people uh, were very much saddened by the assassination of uh, our uh, artist Jalundesa, which was uh, a very, very unfortunate uh, incident, which uh, the, as uh, the rule of law uh, makes it as justice that uh, all the perpetrators behind it uh, closely, as well as uh, in long hands, need to be uh, brought uh, into the justice system and uh, into, the, into the rule of law. As uh, you rightly said, uh, this artist, uh, Jalu, uh, who was part and uh, parcel of the whole reform process in the nation, uh, with a background of uh, bringing more and more uh, a widened economic as well as political spaces for the all kinds of uh, actors, was a process uh, which we have been uh, going since 2018. Then what happened is uh, the number of um, uh, prisoners, particularly political prisoners, who are uh, prison in the country, as well as uh, those uh, opposition leaders, as well as members who are in exile, uh, as well as uh, uh, an opening up of uh, real political space and uh, in fact, subsequent economic spaces were taking uh, a place in the nation. Everyone is happy, everyone is moving. Our uh, Prime Minister's uh, team, when uh, the Prime Minister came into power in what we call a peaceful transition, was a principle of uh, inclusiveness and reconciliation, which we call it uh, the philosophy of Maddamar, which means the only way we can succeed uh, in Ethiopian circumstances, probably the same is true elsewhere, is by, by inclusiveness and reconciliation of the what you call taking the, the good parts or the best lessons from the past, also rectifying the mistakes of the past, including the current context and also the foreseeing uh, what is uh, continentally and globally feasible. So this was like uh, 
the the initiative that's uh, taking spaces as well, opening up of uh, the economic sphere, and so on and so on. Right. So, so what so happened is uh, there are uh, there are there are few uh, elements and individuals who were not uh, happy of about this process. Of course, any discontent Peter uh, can be processed peacefully, democratically, and also following the rule of law. So what happened is there are uh, elements uh, who are uh, internally as well as externally linked to destabilize and dismantle the what you call, uh, they want to create a scramble of diversities in Ethiopia. Which uh, they couldn't succeed. Now Ethiopia is even today is thriving and surviving and surviving and try thriving. But I, I will tell you, those who are behind this, they will come under the rule of law. So talking about the rule of law, uh, people were concerned that uh, your government shut down the internet uh, during these protests. Was such a move necessary? Yeah, Peter, of course, you, you, you brought a very important point. There are um, a number of uh, instigations that are uh, anti-ethnic and anti-religious uh, as a consequence of this event, particularly to achieve what they wanted to achieve on their own design, which they couldn't make it to happen because of the, the great bond in the nation. So uh, it's always very important to weigh the, the advantage and disadvantage of the temporary uh, steps for what you call a sustainable, in fact, the, the long-term uh, values of uh, any kinds of technology. There are uh, people who maximize mainstream media as well as social media to instigate to instigate anti-ethnic as well as anti-religious uh, atrocities. So until these people come uh, into custody, or what to call until they are uh, properly handled, it's, it was uh, very important even to take uh, those measures because there is no way, you know, we know such kind of actions uh, created uh, different kinds of massive damage, massive messes in several parts of the, 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 the continent, as well as this also global experience. So it was uh, a temporary measure. Now, as we speak, that's already uh, uh, opened and operational, but it's uh, also a message which uh, people may be sitting in a different, uh, what you call a comfortable and comfort zones, uh, be it in the country or outside of the country would like to send a message and signal uh, such that, that people and uh, various diversities uh, could not uh, cooperate and collaborate in the matter and in their fates as well. So this was uh, the background and uh, when uh, uh, such uh, activists are under control, then everything is back to normal. And as we speak now, the life and activities and everything is as usual. and. Uh, proceeding as normal as well. Why do we have two and a half million people displaced by ethnic violence? And we see the Tigray People's Liberation Front uh, uh, tensions escalating with the federal government. What can the central government do to, to manage all of these challenges? Yeah, the, um, I think the way we have... Uh, uh, good enough. Uh, we have uh, what you call uh, a constitution to be governed with. We have also the, the federal institutions to be governed with. And any kind of uh, dissent or any kind of discontent has also a mechanism in the current constitution. So what is required is uh, people need to move peacefully democratically and under the rule of law, whatever they want and they would like to achieve. Now, uh, anything uh, which is uh, outside this framework, uh, the constitutional framework, uh, uh, it may have its own consequences. So uh, it's, it's not, uh, Peter, it's not because 
the regional arrangement is creating that. It's the individuals who, has, uh, who do have their own uh, interests, who do have their own, uh, uh, what you call, um, uh, backgrounds. Uh, that may be creating those kind of consequences. And uh, the federal government is now uh, more and more uh, waiting for a matter to create what they call a peaceful resolve of all these issues uh, and also within the reconciliation and inclusiveness principles. But when things are beyond and above those, now the rule of law prevail, uh, rule of law prevail. We've seen the Prime Minister push through uh, a new Ethiopia, a lot of reforms taking place. And I just wonder if everybody is ready and willing uh, to take on board those reforms. I mean, we saw um, his uh, army chief in Amhara get killed recently in what looked like an attempted coup. Is everybody on board with his reforms or are they happening too quickly? Uh, I think as you rightly mentioned, uh, our, uh, our Prime Minister, uh, Dr. Abi Ahmed, by the way, he also visited the Republic of South Africa at early, the uh, early weeks of the January this year, which I may say a few words um, uh, later on. He uh, came up and uh, in fact, with several uh, several uh, reform agenda items that are uh, being uh, probably delivered in decades and decades, if not uh, otherwise, but uh, he achieved in less than two years very, very great achievements to say in any all kinds of standards. The first one is uh, the peace reform agenda items. Peter, you, you may remember the, the, the conflict, the war between Eritrea and Ethiopia uh, took many, many lives, many, many lives. And uh, for uh, almost 20 years, it was uh, what you call uh, a no peace, no war zone. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Dr. Abi resolved it like um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's like something from your own gut and from your own heart and mind that brings everyone. And that was, in fact, one of the very reasons also for his, uh, the, the Nobel Prize, which was uh, delivered. His political reforms, uh, Peter, it's, uh, it's, it's creating, as we said earlier, is uh, to, to, to bring uh, the space as wide as possible so that uh, any kind of uh, the discontent or dissent will be accommodated and people, because of their opinions, attitudes, or positions, will not, be, will not need to be thrown away from the country. And as a result, there are several opposition leaders and opposition members who come back into the country and to exercise their own uh, the ideological stance, organizational stance, and institutional stance as well. Subsequently, there were also number of, uh, a number of uh, legislations, policies that are also put in place, which will help uh, whatever we described earlier will be a reality as well. Civic movements, individual organizations, everything was allowed in the country so that uh, people can enjoy the right democratic and political space as we speak. And subsequently, there are several organizations that are uh, uh, reviewed, that reviewed their own mandates and also their own legislature uh, so that it will uh, bring the required change. There are also several economic reforms as well uh, that has taken place. And under the economic reforms, there is also a homegrown economic reform that addressed, uh, including the mega projects that were uh, 
traditionally owned by the, the government, where the private sector also could take part. So the, the major economic as well as political reforms, also all of them come in reason what you call under the inclusiveness and reconciliation framework where it's only and only that all of us are united. All of us are ready to listen to each other. And when there is a difference, discuss through what you call the ideals rather than the traditional old fashioned um, way of approaching differences. So the, this reform is actually very much inclusive. Everyone is happy. Of course, as uh, you may know, we are also in transition. So when you have uh, in a reform transition, there are uh, issues which you may need to clarify. And uh, some people also, they may have their own ego again, uh, which may they may not be happy on the reform that has taken place. You talked about the region and uh, the continent. And perhaps as we start to wrap this conversation up, I'd just like to get your sense about what uh, your country's vision is for this new Ethiopia in the world. Uh, we know that you've scored these successes in Eritrea. The president was there uh, recently welcomed by President uh, uh, Afueki, and I think that's a symbol of uh, huge change, as you've described just now. What about the rest of the region and the continent? What does Ethiopia want to contribute? I know that consensus and working together is something that's important for AU leadership. Thank you so much, uh, Peter, again. I think uh, uh, regardless, uh, regardless of the Ethiopian governance systems, uh, Ethiopia has always been and consistently uh, tried to achieve the, or live the expectations of the spirit of uh, Pan-Africanism and uh, African Renaissance. And of course, uh, starting the, the, the great contribution of uh, Adwa victory, which uh, we feel is uh, one, of the, one of the victories that paved the way for the continent's uh, freedom and sovereignty. Ethiopia remained always very firm uh, towards the Africa's cause. Ethiopia has uh, always been a, a firm believer of the uh, African uh, causes and uh, the various projects, including the Ethiopian Renaissance, the, the, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam as well, is also an African project. And as you know, uh, since the, the formation of uh, OAU, Organization of African Union, and also subsequently to African Union, uh, Ethiopia, and also, of course, the, as a seat of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa as well, uh, Ethiopia serves the, the best possible uh, services for the, the continental cause. So, uh, the, the, I was saying, our Prime Minister, uh, Dr. Abiy Ahmed, also is following the same path, strengthening the, the, the regional uh, blocks and also the regional blocks strengthening themselves so that Africa will have uh, the stronger African identity and also African sovereignty. And as you rightly understand, we always strive for African solutions as well. African solutions for African problems. So uh, our uh, historical uh, contribution, also be it at in front of the United Nations platform or continental platform, uh, uh, being uh, it, even you may take the cases of uh, uh, the Republic of South Africa, as well as uh, the Republic of uh, Namibia and so on and so on, how we were uh, fighting for the African sovereignty cause, African freedom cause, and also making sure that uh, these countries, the African continent, member states are freed from any kind of colonialism 
and also in peacekeeping forces throughout the, the continent. Ethiopia has never been uh, declined uh, from extending uh, its hands and also contributing its level best when it comes to the Africa's cause. This is also uh, what we would like to continue, what we would like to pursue. In fact, uh, within this framework of uh, pan-Africanism and also with the AU-led process, we are very much happy and confident what the African Union under the chairmanship of uh, His Excellency President Shira Ramaphosa is also putting a new chapter, how the continent can design its own uh, programs, uh, can design its own projects, and also can resolve its own challenge by its own. This is what we mean, the Africa we want, the African unity, the African uh, sovereignty, and also the African identity, of course. What it means is the, the population of the continent uh, also need to be brought into the same, same picture so that Africans can be considered as African citizens in their own continent, wherever they are, wherever they move. And this is the, the, the dream, the vision that our, uh, my prime minister, Dr. Abi Ahmed, when they met uh, in Pretoria with uh, Honorable President Cyril uh, Ramaphosa, how in addition to the bilateral fronts, how they can enhance the, the continental matters, including uh, the, the various thematic areas of including the silencing of the guns, the gender issues, the peace and the stability matter in the continent and contributing the same to the global platforms as well.